So much has changed in a week. What seemed terribly important on September 10th may not rise to the level of trivial now. Nightline correspondent John Donvan went back to take a look at where we were and what we were thinking about before Tuesday and how our perspective has changed since then. To look back now and try to piece together a picture of who we all were before this happened and to recall what we talked about then and what we thought mattered then, it almost feels like archaeology to sift through evidence that is only as old as last Monday's newspapers. Can it really be that what most of the front pages highlighted just a week ago, exactly a week ago, was the big game, the big match, the big record? And of course, Tuesday morning on television, even as hijackers approached New York and Washington, Superstar the big, Michael big Jordan story. News, the strongest words yet from Jordan, that he will be back. It seemed so important then. Everyone guessing. It looks like such a luxury now. What else do the papers say that we worried about last Monday? Layoffs, which are real and even more real now. The ethics of stem cell research, which are still important. But all that fretting we did this year about how to age, how to keep healthy, how to stay happy. Watch out, guys. And that hyped-up sex scandal, has it been mentioned even once these past four days? The congressman came to mourn with everyone else. The media left him alone. Difficult times make great men, the saying goes. Last Tuesday morning, the Village Voice had comments from voters saying things like, Rudy Giuliani should dig a deep hole and stuff himself into it. This week, some say he may have achieved greatness. Yeah, what's the situation right now? And might the tone change here in Washington, D.C.? The White House correspondent for Cox Newspapers suspects that it will. The impact of this, even we as journalists, haven't even begun to absorb. When I looked at the pictures this morning of the ash and papers that had fallen over the graveyard in lower Manhattan, you, you see an image like that and, and you're gripped again. We haven't begun to absorb this yet. And I think that cynicism will, will take uh, quite a long time time off now. Last Monday, as it happens, the papers carried a big story about the threat of suicide attackers, but it was, as it always seemed to us, someone else's problem, Israel's. A few weeks earlier, after another attack in Israel, you heard the sort of advice the U.S. always gave the Israelis. We've worked very closely with uh, Prime Minister Sharon to urge him to show restraint. Restraint an emotion that now feels like more of a luxury to us. It's been a pretty good run for prosperity these past few years, especially for people who worked in New York's financial district. Stuff, owning stuff, seemed to be an imperative. Last Monday's papers again, they were full of the usual ads. And now, well, by the middle of last week, it seemed pretty clear that a lot of people had lost their appetite for shopping. And there was that Neiman Marcus salesperson quoted in the Washington Post who said she suddenly felt ridiculous putting her energy into trying to sell lipstick with, as she put it, all the tragedy and destruction. This morning, however, people were starting to head back to the malls and some of them were actually going with a new reason to buy. Well, Patriotic duty, I, I know, or as the, the Treasury term, Secretary put it this morning, uh, this is the time to buy America. We're going to show resilience. The people out there in the farms and factories and shops are going to uh, put America back on a fast track. Our heroes will now open the marketplace. The Wall Street reopened this morning. Traders showed up, but somehow the game had changed. Last week, we heard this put most eloquently and painfully by the head of a Wall Street firm that lost 700 of its 1,000 employees in the attack. There's only one reason to be in business, is because we have to make our company be able to take care of my 700 families. 700 families. And we have 700 families. President Kennedy has been assassinated. It's official now. 38 years ago, when a U.S. president was murdered, people also sensed that the world had changed forever. 
The nation stopped moving for a while to mourn a single man. There was a sense of an innocence lost for good. In New York City, they are mourning thousands, and their faces are everywhere. 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 Lost is the sense of ever feeling safe the same way again. I am so pleased that there are so many here in this great basilica. But out of all this, maybe Americans also found some things that had been missing on Monday morning. On the Saturday before the attack, the newspapers carried the usual schedules of worship, and certainly there are Americans who worship every day. But after Tuesday, religious attendance soared. And something else, maybe for the first time in ages, we may be seeing heroes, real heroes, not athletes playing a game, or celebrities playing a role, or billionaires playing with their toys, but quiet people who take real risks that they don't have to, and for no reward. And finally, a return to last Monday's sports coverage, when the Rangers beat the Royals and the Blue Jays topped the Tigers and so on, we can be pretty sure that a lot of fans just wanted that same old anthem over with so they could start the game already. That's not how it felt tonight when Major League Baseball played its first game since the attack. And as we saw, they opened Wall Street with a different patriotic song. It's the same one that Americans have taken to singing across the country these last few days. Maybe over time, these feelings will fade away. Maybe Americans eventually will stop singing patriotic songs. But at least we saw that people still remember the words. And that's more than we could be sure of last Monday. I'm John Donvan for Nightline in Washington. The return to work today could not erase an overall sense of tension. The country remains on a high state of alert, uncertain of what the future will bring. More on that when we return.